Hi, I'm Anisha Dua, and I'm an associate professor at Northwestern University, and I'm talking now from Chicago, Illinois. Um, and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about polymyalgia rheumatica. Should you worry about occult GCA? Now, classically, we think about PMR and GCA as very closely related diseases. There's a lot of commonalities in the demographics, primarily affecting the elderly and those of Scandinavian or Eastern European descent, and also the pathophysiology of these two diseases. There's increased prevalence of senescent T cells, reduction in the level of Tregs, more Th17 lymphocytes, and lower B cells in the peripheral blood. Additionally, it's clear that there's a subset of patients with PMR, about 15 to 20%, who will go on to develop full-blown GCA. And that's why it's really important to ask about symptoms of GCA during each follow-up visit with your PMR patients, and also to consider assessing for GCA both cranial and large vessel symptoms in those PMR patients with elevated inflammatory markers who are not reporting recurrence of their classic PMR symptoms or who are refractory to low-dose prednisone therapy. We know that treatment in both of these diseases include glucocorticoids, but the dose that's required to control the inflammation in GCA and prevent vision loss or other ischemic complications are much higher than the ones that we use in PMR. But what about patients who present with classic PMR symptoms? They deny any cranial symptoms of GCA. They don't have any limb claudication. In both diseases, we expect the inflammatory markers to be raised. So are there any clues that might point out subclinical GCA in patients who are presenting with PMR? Now, one study looked at PET scans in patients with only PMR symptoms, and it showed that a third of these patients actually had evidence of large vessel inflammation on PET. And there was another recent uh, prospective study of about 60 newly diagnosed PMR patients, and they performed vascular ultrasound, looking at the facial, temporal, carotid, vertebral, and axillary arteries to look, is there any signs of GCA? And they actually found evidence of vascular involvement in 46% of these newly diagnosed PMR patients, and 22% had asymptomatic or subclinical GCA. Now, in this study, joint effusions were higher in the PMR GCA overlap group with significance at the hip joint. And then another clue that pointed towards con concomitant diagnosis of GCA was highly elevated C-reactive protein values above 26.5. Now, GCA is likely being underdiagnosed in PMR patients at the time of disease onset. And in some cases, PMR might just be the preventing manifestation of GCA. But this raises the issue of whether patients with PMR should be screened with imaging for evidence of large vessel involvement. The fact that 20 to 50% of PMR patients will have an inadequate response to therapy or relapse within the first year may suggest that some of these patients actually do have subclinical GCA. But the catch is that it's still unclear whether treating these patients with PMR and subclinical GCA more aggressively will actually prevent ischemic complications or relapsing disease. One study didn't show any increased relapses or vascular complications in the PMR patients with subclinical large vessel involvement on PET scanning. But larger controlled studies with different imaging modalities need to be done in order to answer this important question. So for the time being, PMR patients with any phenotypic evidence of GCA or refractory disease should be assessed for GCA and treated accordingly. But it remains a question if whether more aggressive treatment in subclinical GCA will actually change outcomes. In my opinion, it would be really hard not to treat potentially too aggressively once I know that there's large vessel inflammation. So at this point, I wouldn't recommend universal screening of PMR patients for subclinical GCA, as it would likely lead to overtreatment and unnecessary medication risks without clear benefits. But on the flip side, I would have a very high level of vigilance in screening for GCA, both clinically and looking for occult large vessel inflammation in those PMR patients who have persistently elevated inflammatory markers, an inadequate response to low-dose prednisone, or unexplained elevation of inflammatory markers without recurrence of their PMR symptoms. Thanks for having me today. It was great talking with all of you.